Jane Goodall, legendary primatologist and anthropologist. Seven success facts to fuel your success. Number one. In 1934, Valerie Jane Morris Goodall was born in London, England. She was only five years old when World War II began and her father left to fight in the war. Jane's parents later divorced, leaving her mother to raise Jane and her younger sister. Number two. Jane moved with her mother and younger sister to her grandmother's house in Bournemouth, England. Jane had an early love for books, reading, and rereading Dr. Doolittle. Money was tight, but Jane managed to save up just enough to afford a used copy of Tarzan of the Apes. This was the book that inspired her dream to go to Africa and study animals. Jane's mother was very supportive of her interest in science and exploration and encouraged Jane to pursue her dream. Number three. Jane did well in school, but was irritated when she was confined to the classroom. She longed to be outside. Not everyone was as supportive of Jane's ambitions. In high school, the guidance counselor balked at Jane's plan to go to Africa and study animals, suggesting instead that Jane pick a more realistic and normal career as a pet photographer. After graduating from high school, the family did not have money for Jane to attend college. Jane's mother suggested that if Jane took a secretarial course, then she would have a practical skill that would help her eventually be able to get a job in Africa. In the meantime, Jane continued learning and studying about Africa. Jane's first job was at Oxford University. Next, she was employed by a firm in London that made documentary films. Jane's dream was getting closer and closer. One day, she received an invitation from a friend to come to Kenya. Jane was elated. In order to save money, Jane moved back home and worked as a waitress, eventually saving up enough money for her trip to Kenya. While working as a secretary in Nairobi, Jane's love of animals was very apparent, and her friend recommended that she meet Louis Leakey, a famous paleoanthropologist. Fortuitously, Lewis needed a secretary and hired Jane. Lewis admired Jane's passion and knowledge of animals, eventually deciding that she would be the perfect individual to study and observe chimpanzees in Tanzania. Lewis actually saw Jane's lack of a college education as an asset and theorized that Jane would be unbiased in her approach. But he struggled initially to secure funding for the project. In the 1960s, no one, much less a woman, and one without a college degree, was studying chimps in the wild. Lewis managed to finally get the project funded, but only for six months. Tanzanian officials required that Jane have an escort. Ever supportive of her daughter, Jane's mother agreed to come with her to the Gombe Stream Game Reserve. The first four months went by with nothing substantial to show for the many days that Jane had spent hiking difficult terrain in hopes of seeing a chimpanzee. On the rare occasion when she did see one, they'd run away from her. Finally, after four months, Jane made a breakthrough. One of the chimpanzees, one she had named David Greybeard, let Jane watch him. And then the others did too. Soon after, she observed that David Greybeard was using tools, something previously thought to only be a skill belonging to humans. She went on to observe that the chimps made tools as well. Number four. After that trip, and while pursuing her PhD at Cambridge University, Jane encountered criticism from established scientists who disagreed with her approach. They attacked her choice to name the chimps she studied, instead of numbering them. They argued the viewpoint of the time, the humans were the only beings with personalities and emotions. When National Geographic published photographs and films showing the chimps displaying emotions, affection, jealousy, and visual proof of using tools, the scientific community began
began to shift its views. After earning her PhD in 1966, Jane carried on with her work at Gombe. Through working with National Geographic, Jane's work gained a public audience. Initially, Jane disliked the attention that came as she was placed in the spotlight, but ultimately she seized the opportunity as a platform for conservation. After over two decades of working in Gombe, Jane expanded her work and set out on a mission to stop deforestation and preserve the habitats of chimpanzees and many other animals. Number five. In 1987, Goodall received the Golden Plate Award from the American Academy of Achievement. Since 2002, Goodall has been a United Nations messenger of peace. In 2003, Goodall was given a damehood and the title of Dame Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. Time Magazine named Goodall among 2019's 100 Most Influential People in the World. In 2021, Goodall was honored with the Templeton Prize for her exemplary achievements in harnessing the power of the sciences to explore the deepest questions of the universe. In 2022, Goodall received the Stephen Hawking Medal for Science Communication. Number six. Jane's work revolutionized the way science viewed animals and their connection to humans. Today, Jane continues to tirelessly spread the message of conservation and that every individual can make a difference. Number seven. In 1977, the Jane Goodall Institute was founded to promote conservation and conservation education. In 1991, Jane established the Roots and Shoots program to empower young people to affect positive change in their communities. If you made it this far, hit the like button to let us know you want more content like this. Like and share with the ambitious in your life and check out the SDH Legend Library in the description below. SuccessfulDailyHabits.com Learn from legends. Be legendary.